Cheers, dear. Cheers. I like your shirt. I thought it's a nice you would. nice color. I know. <laughs> I didn't wear anything fun. No. Just a regular green shirt. That's fine. I actually brought this to Japan and didn't wear it at all, so it still it has like all the wrinkles in it from your eyes. my trip. Your it eyes does. match your shirt. Yes. He has gray eyes. They like change color. It's interesting. They do. Anyway, we're talking about <laughs> Japan. Japan, yes. Because someone just got back from there. Yes. You notice I haven't been in a few right nows recently because I've been in the land of the rising sun. So uh, I came back, I brought a bunch of cool stuff, and I wanted to talk about my trip. Yes. So, so why'd you go? Why did I go? It was the 100th anniversary of Platinum Pens. So they had a big ceremony and they brought some of their top retailers from around the world and we were one of them. So that was kind of cool. So we were there, Anderson Pens, Bittner, and Pen Chalet. Traveling with there. John and Traveling. Carol Gillette. Yeah, of luxury brands, the distributor. So, um, you know, I thought at first like it could be a little awkward just like going with you know, more or less our competitors, but it was very amicable. The pen industry is so cool and everybody's like really amicable and nice well, and all that kind of stuff. Well, so. I mean, we all benefit when everybody wins, you know, the whole yeah. rising tide raises all ships. So. Yeah. And so most of the trip was actually just going and kind of touring around Tokyo and getting a sense of Japan and kind of what was going on there. Um, but, you know, it was to build relations with, you know, luxury brands or distributor. It was to build relations with Platinum Japan mm -hmm. to kind of represent the U.S. there when they were bringing people from literally all over the world to celebrate their 100th anniversary. There were about 75 people there total that they brought in. So it was mm -hmm. pretty impressive uh, all over the delegation, world. if you will. Um, and then just to learn more about Japanese culture. And then they gave us a tour of their nib factory as well. So we mm -hmm. got to kind of see. But you couldn't take any pictures. Made. I couldn't take any pictures of the nib oh. factory. It was killing me. And but. you didn't get to see like how the pens were made either. No, because they have different factories all over mm. Japan. So, um, but I did get to see some of like the final. Did you get stuff. a sense for how automated they were? Yeah, um, it's a lot of handwork. Um, at least in the factory that I went to, it's like the um, they have machines the and stuff. Process. You said it's like a fifteen-step process. It is a fifteen-step process. Now this was just the gold nib, so mm -hmm. I don't know about the steel. It's like stuff for the uh, uh, like the thirty-seven seventy-six century. Yeah, that's what they were making. Up. It was thirty-seven seventy-six nibs when we were there. Um, so they use machines and stuff, obviously, because they're you know forming metal right. into a nib. Um, but some of them are manually nib. operated. They're all, yeah, like foot pedals and, you know, manipulating the, the gold by hand and stuff like that. So it was a very manual process. And from what I understand, they they like train every person to do like their part of the process. Their one step. Yeah, and they're like masters at that one thing. Mm. And they do that like all day long. Um, and they're like very intent, very focused. It's it, very makes you, it makes you appreciate just the work that goes into a gold nib, like wow, 15 Absolutely. steps to, to form that. And there are human beings touching every, yeah, step, every of the step of the process. Inspecting and checking and yeah, lots of That's lots of intentionality cool. behind it. So it's no wonder that platinum ah! is some of the most consistent nibs. You hey, inked, you inked me. Oh yeah, I brought that on the plane. So I may have a little uh. bit of ink on the nib. Um, <laughs> Thank okay. you, Andy. <laughs> so um, for me to travel over there, it took about 46 and a half hours to get there because I had a layover that was overnight and just because of the timing of the flights and you all that. You had to fly from, you drove up to Dulles, you drove up to Dulles. from Dulles to LA, uh -huh. layover, and yeah. then LA where you met up with everybody. Yep, met up with Tokyo. everybody and then LA to Tokyo and then the airport was like an hour to an hour and a half from Tokyo. So you had a bus ride? Yeah, at Narita Airport. So mm -hmm. it was uh, it was quite a trip. And then coming back, it was 28 hours. Only 28 Short, hours. Because you had a shorter layover in LA. It wasn't overnight. And and we flew overnight coming and back from Japan. So I had to sleep on the plane. <laughs> and so daylight well. savings. Huh. Yeah, it was just a kind of a mess. So it's definitely a hike to get over there from Virginia. It took you a couple of days to recover. You were a zombie the first couple of days back. You might still be kind of a zombie, but that might be more because we were back to normal life with Which is crazy. business and kids, but uh, what are you going to do? So tell us about what you did there, Brian. Yeah. So, I mean, there's obviously like going there with platinum and getting to see some of their pen stuff. I'll talk about that in a second. I mean, you um, have some souvenirs. I have some souvenirs and I have some highlights of what I did, but um, you know, basically just like getting a sense of their culture, which is just very different than what we have here and very different than like Germany, Italy, which I've been to before. Mm. Um, you know, we're like very European influence here. Going to Japan, like more obviously Asian influence, and it's just a very different culture than what we have here. Um, they're very quiet. Very intentional, very focused, very like to themselves. Like they're a very passionate people. 
but their passion is focused very like kind of inwardly very towards, organized quality focused yeah clean very clean like at least, Tok at least tokyo clean. you didn't visit the whole country but i didn't no i went to tokyo and then mount fuji and you know a couple places around there um but yeah just really impressed so um, just some highlights of random touristy kind of things i got to do i got to go see a shinto temple that was in uh, Tokyo, which was pretty cool. Um, got to see the Imperial Palace, not the inside, because they only open it twice a year. Um, but I got to see the outside in the cold rain. That was fun. Um, the rain then, or seeing it? Oh, just all of it. <laughs> it was a whole experience. Um, going to the Emperor's Garden, which is like owned by the city now. So you could go in there and we did a green tea ceremony with the tatami mats and the whole thing. Now, were there cherry blossoms everywhere? There were. They weren't really in the season yet. Mm, so there sure. were like some blooms that were starting to peek out. Um, went to the Tsukushi fish market, which was one of my favorite parts of the entire trip. You're not an adventurous eater. I'm normally not, but I just like, I don't know. On this trip, I was like, what the heck? I'm You're here. here. Yeah. If you don't like sushi I don't like Japan, sushi, like, like, freshly caught that day. Then you don't like Japan. sushi. Like, come on now. <laughs> um, so I did kind of go nuts there. Um, I went to several different pen stores. Now, they have a lot of pen stores in yeah. Tokyo. So, so I couldn't that, That's a difference in the all. U.S. So, like, in Japan and some other countries that... I've, I've heard of oh, yeah. it's like a pen store in every corner type thing and in the u.s yeah. like you're there are some people who have to drive hours to get to one nearest pen store yeah, we're, we're much more online centric <clears throat> here there's still more brick and mortar it wasn't quite like a pen store in every corner like i was ex maybe well, expecting or hoping yeah, to but see then you also have like 12 story pen stores Right. <laughs> and there's a lot of what they call shop and shops. Mm. So you'll have a bookstore that'll have like a pen display of mm. Lamy and Pilot and whatever. Um, so there's a lot of that kind of thing. So there's, when you say like there's pen stores all over the place, there's a lot of that happening. Did you, you know? see a lot of the Japanese brands, Pilot, Platinum Sailor? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. The big three. <laughs> but there are a lot of other ones. I saw a lot of Lamy, I saw a lot of Parker and other things that were there. So mm. a lot of things I was pretty familiar with. Um, and then, so I went to Atoya, which is like huge, very touristy kind of, um, That's the big pen store. Yeah. Like a big 12 story building right in the Ginza, which is like the fifth Avenue of New York. Um, if you can imagine. That was where I was worried you'd never come home. Well, I could have stayed there for quite a while. He brought an empty suitcase over, by the way. <laughs> it wasn't empty. Eh, I brought you, you a larger suitcase no, you with room. No, you redistributed your stuff so it wouldn't be empty, but basically it could yeah. have been empty. It you could, could have fit all your stuff in one. I could have bought more stuff, yes. Um, uh, so I did that, went to another smaller like vintage store called Eurobox, which was kind of spontaneous. And that was cool because um, I picked up a couple of good finds there, one of which was um, this blue like marbled uh, kind of vanishing point, which we'll show in a sec. Uh, and then I also got the, a, original. the original Platinum Prime, which is what the current 100th, 100th anniversary, anniversary is modeled after. So I got one of the originals, which is kind of cool. And it's also got somebody's name engraved in, in kanji, which that's I thought cool. is kind of cool, which the pen actually cost less because it was engraved. And I was like, I think that's cooler. So you have no idea who score. it is, but I don't, but that's okay. Um, uh, what else did I do? I went to Marazen, which is like a bookstore. It's kind of like the Barnes and Noble of Japan, I guess. Okay. Um, so they have like a bunch of different bookstores, but they had a pen event that was happening in there. What timing? Uh, I know. And so I bought a couple of pens there. I bought uh, a couple of sailors because we don't have those. So I got a sailor king of pens. And they're much cheaper there. In blue, of course. Yeah. I've, got I've never sailor... seen this one with the clear ends. That's yeah, really cool. I've never seen it either. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. Um, sailor promenade as well, which is blue and sparkly. And then I got Paulette Grants. I don't know how you say it. Grants. Grance. <laughs> uh, whatever <laughs> you it is. You've got to sing it. Exactly. And then some of the other things I bought. Um, I just love I the Pilot like Petite one. I've been petitioning Pilot to bring this in for years. Yeah. I lost mine in pink, so yeah, now I have many colors. The Petite these are one. Mine, right? Yes. <laughs> All yours, Thanks for watching the kids for 10 days. Here, you get the yes. cheapest pens you, you buy. Some, you get <laughs> some $2 pens from Japan. Enjoy. <laughs> Um, also got Pilot Cocoon, which is basically the Metropolitan in Japan, but they have colors that we don't have. So I got all the colors that we could get. Just um, to have them. Just to have them. Because you love not? pens. <laughs> I do love pens. Um, and then I got a Platinum, excuse me, Procyon as well that has the 100th anniversary logo on the back. That was a gift for attending the ceremony, which what are, what are those over there? is kind of cool. Is... These are multi pens. So they're like, you know, ballpoint and pencil and, and red but they're ballpoint. they're pretty. But they just look cool, and it's got Mount Fuji on it, so and it's got cherry blossoms. Yeah. So. Cherry blossoms everywhere. Green tea was everywhere. Got some chopsticks, I see. I did get some fancy chopsticks. 
And then I got this fancy wood box, which was like one of the highlights of the trip for me was um, we went to... Do you want me to see if we can do the instructions and try to open oh, it? Oh, lordy, no. We don't have time for that. <laughs> We're going to mess around with that later. It's a puzzle box. It's so a 10-step like, process. You like slide parts of the box and you have to like manipulate it to be able to un unlock the thing. It's a 10-step process, which I haven't gone through yet. Um, but anyway, it was made by this like really skilled craftsman who gave us a demonstration of how they all work. Um, and it was just like this little shop that was near um, the black eggs of Owakudani, um, which you is like... You ate black eggs. I ate a black egg, yeah. It's like an egg that's cooked in the volcanic, you know, activity that happens. It's like from the spring water of the volcanic whatever. What and it, it turns like? the eggs black. It tasted like a hard-boiled egg. Okay. But apparently you live like 7 to 20 years longer by eating one of these eggs. So I thought it was for the good of the pen community. How many did you eat? That I eat one. I just ate one. <laughs> okay. I don't know if it's like a multiplicative kind of thing. You just eat eggs all day and fun. live forever. I don't think that's quite how it works. Um, but then, of course, I got to see Platinum, got to partake in some of their celebratory So they activities. had like a big corporate anniversary celebration, like all they day did. thing. They did, yeah. And so, and like formal part of it was held like at their... Um, this like sh um, temple that is uh, like a samurai temple. It's 400 mm. years old, and there's like you know shoguns buried in the back of this thing, and at these like mausoleum type things. It's very like very traditional Japanese, and we have to be very respectful and take off our shoes and all this kind of stuff. Um, but it was cool. They had like a display of a hundred years of platinum pens. Mm. So they had pens from like every year that they'd come out with. Uh, displayed at this thing and they had like very formal traditional ceremony type stuff that was going on so that was really I was really honored by being a part of that I didn't had no half of what was going on at the time a lot of silence just yeah a lot of silence listening. there was a lot of translation that had to happen and stuff like that so because there were people from all over the world there were but English is in Chinese the business and English. language which is helpful yeah it did help but, a lot of um, people spoke English yeah just it was a very traditional and, and you really got the sense of like okay there's there's definitely like a deeper history and stuff going on here than I even realized. So just getting a sense of kind of who Platinum is. Yeah. And what so who's about. who's who owns Tell? The story. That. Yeah. Um, I can do that just for the sake of time. We gotta get wrapping up yeah. here. But um, so uh, Mr. Nakata is the CEO there. His grandfather is one who started the company a hundred years ago. So it's third so generation, it's like, family owned, small. Yeah. Yeah, they're relatively small. There's about 200 people. I mean, relative the to company. Pilot, which is a massive corporation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're not a they're not a tiny company. They're not like a one craftsman in his garage kind right. of thing. Um, but you know, they're relatively smaller compared to probably Sailor and, and certainly Pilot. Um, but uh, you know, just very much a family company. Very, um, you know, kind of a frugal company. You can tell they're they're very oriented towards you know, quality and craftsmanship mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, and you mentioned the last couple of years they've been hiring some new designers and you got to meet some of them. I did. I got to meet the guy who designed the Kumpu and I totally fanboyed out with him and was like gushing and I was like, can you please make more of these things? Um, so yeah, and that was, that was, and the, he was uh, kind of a hit at the And the Procyon designer too. Yeah, I got to meet the guy who designed the Perseon too, so it was cool, and I took selfies with them. Like, a well, fan. and part part of why you were there too was also to represent the U.S., represent U.S. customers, yeah. well, really all of our customers, yeah. and what sort of things we like to see. We're like, make more colors like that, or these are popular. Here's some trends we're seeing in a way that's respectful to of course, what yeah. they're all about, but just to be like, well, if you want my opinion. You know? Well, that's one interesting balance that I always end up having to strike. Because mm -hmm. you know, when we do visit with manufacturers and distributors and things, we always try to be really respectful, but also give feedback to what right. the community wants. So that is a fine line of diplomacy that I usually walk. And so I was able to do that uh, as well at this thing. That's so good. all in all, it was a phenomenal trip. Very tiring. Um, yeah. It was hard to be away. This is the longest that Rachel and I had been apart since yeah. we've been married. Long time to watch kids. Um, I got so. the flu. Or I didn't get the flu. I, I you got sick in the middle of yeah. it. Yeah. Our daughter had the flu. <laughs> it was crazy. And then there was like an interview with the Associated Press that yeah, happened so in the middle of this Yeah, so there's an article trip. about us, which you can go check out. It's getting picked up. I saw it in the Washington Post, um, some Oklahoma newspaper. Like, I don't I don't even know where all it's being picked up, but... Um, but it's basically like promoting fountain pens. Talking yeah. about like, hey, these still exist. Which is great. So that's pretty it's cool. It's great to get the word out. So, so Rachel was going to do that. She got sick. I ended up doing it at like 11.30 the time change on Wednesday out. in the middle of this trip. It was just crazy, but it was a really good time. I was honored to be able to go to, you know... Get a Very better thankful sense of for the um, luxury brands use distributor for um, you know yes everything they arranged. Yeah, and... they did a lot to really show us um, the culture and, and show us a good time there. 
So there you go. That was my trip to Japan. I'll talk more detail in about it on uh, Q and A because I got a bunch of questions about it. So cool. specifically, I'll talk more about pens and the pen stores because uh, that's what I got asked about a lot. So I mean, I'll talk about it more. Yeah, when in Japan. Of course. Anyway, <laughs> that's Japan. I highly recommend it. If you ever get the chance to go, check out Tokyo. It's pretty rad. Um, thanks so much for watching. And right on. Right on.